What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this awesome Switch 2 update video we have a lot of information to discuss including multiple new game rumors for Switch 2 with some new information on games not yet shared by other channels and new amazing breakthroughs for DLSS with real examples for how it will look on Switch 2 and possible evidence that certain top people in the tech industry, not the gaming industry mind you, but the tech industry, may in fact already know the chip size of the Switch 2 SoC and it's something that we should examine to see if this is the case. This is a jam-packed video, but not to worry since everything will be timestamped for easy navigation and of course, if you do enjoy this content, please give this video a big like and subscribe to the channel for more. So, first up, let's go over the game rumors coming to Switch 2 and there are a lot of them. Now, as you can imagine, with a console like Switch 2 that will likely be around an Xbox Series S in terms of performance, when you take into consideration all the new tech it will take advantage of with Nvidia DLSS and more, you'd expect a lot of ports from the last few years, older games and new games, but also new Nintendo games from franchises that have been on the back burner, perhaps not with any new games for quite a long time. So here's just a rundown of third-party games that are rumored to be coming to Switch 2 from various different sources, but I'd say these are probably likely ports. First of all, we got Halo Master Chief Collection, then we got Forza Horizon 5, Starfield, Doom the Dark Ages, and even Perfect Dark, the new Perfect Dark being developed for Xbox, since a new job listing for the game says that they are working on multiple platforms for various visual settings, so that could be a very good hint that the Switch 2 port would be coming, and I would say it's likely since this is Microsoft and they are basically porting everything to everywhere. A lot of Xbox games will be coming to Switch 2. And we also have Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake, Final Fantasy 7 Remake and Rebirth as we talked about before, Elden Ring, and of course, the long talked about on this channel, Cyberpunk 2077, which is being rumored as a Switch 2 launch window game. But in regards to this Cyberpunk 2077 port and how it could look on Switch 2, we will be talking about that more in detail later on in this video, especially in regards to the DLSS technology, so stay tuned for that. Also, it looks like we may be getting a Lords of the Fallen Switch 2 port as well, which would be great news for me personally since it was in my top 3 games of 2023 behind Metroid Prime Remastered and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and despite its launch issues, Lords of the Fallen plays really well now, nearly flawlessly after all the patches, and it has sold over 1 million copies for CI games. And this particular Souls-like game really grabbed my attention, thanks in part to its combat, stat progression, and its real-time dark world slash light world mechanic that allowed you to travel between both worlds instantly to solve puzzles and unlock new abilities, which of course reminded me of Metroid Prime 2. So you can imagine that due to this, Lords of the Fallen really just hit all the right spots for me to enjoy, made it stand out to me more so personally when the game did release at the end of 2023. So the reason why I think it's likely for a Switch 2 port is because a few days ago, I actually straight up just asked the official Lords of the Fallen account on Twitter to see if a Switch 2 port was coming. Kind of half joking, but of course hopeful. And in a post I said I'll take any non-response as confirmation about the Switch 2 port. So while yes, they did not actually respond, Something else interesting happened, which was the CEO of CI Games liked my tweet. And as you know, likes are now hidden on Twitter, so please don't tell him I told you guys about this, but he did like my post. Either way, this just might be a hint that a port of the Souls-like Lords of the Fallen is coming to Switch 2, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, the biggest rumor I think for a new Switch 2 game is a new Star Fox game in development. Now, funny enough, I was actually asked by my live chat on December 22nd on my Star Fox 64 playthrough if I heard of any rumors of a new Star Fox game in development, and here's what I said. Any rumors on Star Fox game for Switch 2? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I, uh, I have actually heard rumors about a Star Fox game in development for Switch 2. So they, they may have actually have something for Switch Wolverine 2. Came through. Like I said, we'll see Star Fox Return. Maybe we'll get a, a game called Star Fox Returns. That'd be great, huh? Star Fox Returns. That's an interesting thought. So, you know, I'm not really trying to rumor stuff on my channel, like I've said before, but someone did directly ask me about Star Fox for Switch 2. So, yeah, I kind of admitted that I did hear it was coming. But not only that, 
just nine days after I said that, there was a rumor by Samus Hunter, who has actually been correct on all their rumors after returning to rumoring in early to mid 2024 or so. And they actually rumored on December 31st, 2024, that a new Star Fox game is coming to Switch 2 and that it would be a return of the Star Fox Adventures format. It was heavily hinted at, which is something I'd be excited for since I really liked the original Star Fox Adventures and always wanted more of that type of game for Star Fox. And Samus Hunter also reiterated that this would be a new game in the series, not a remaster or remake of Star Fox Adventures, but a brand new game that would be continuing the formula of Star Fox Adventures and not continuing where Zero left off, Star Fox Zero. Then a few weeks later, we had the lead art director, former lead art director, Takei Amura, in charge of the Star Fox, F-Zero, and Zelda series. They chimed in and replied to someone who posted on Twitter that they hoped Switch 2 would get a new Star Fox game. And he said in reply, at least according to Google Translate, that will definitely meet. So basically, he seems to think Star Fox on Switch 2 is happening. So yeah, I think we got a pretty good chance of having Star Fox return. So I'm slowly getting excited about that possibility, but obviously we need to see the game in action and announced before we get way too excited. But I think it's sounding promising and Star Fox really, really needs a break, guys. Like seriously, I kind of think of Fox McCloud as my old buddy and long lost friend that we need to get back into action. So I'm really hoping for the best. So next up, we now have real world game examples not just NVIDIA PR speak, mind you, but real world game examples of how awesome DLSS 4's new Transformer model looks like in action. And I tested this extensively in Cyberpunk 2077 on my PC and the results are really, really impressive. In fact, game changing for various reasons. Now, while I did discuss this in a previous video that this feature is in fact confirmed to work with Switch 2, the question many people had was how much performance loss would the new DLSS 4 Transformer model take up if Switch 2 were to use it and if that would even be worth it, all depending on how good it looks running from lower resolutions like performance mode, for example. So I've looked at various videos of lower spec Ampere RTX 3050 GPUs running Cyberpunk 2077 with the new DLSS 4 and basically there is about a 5 to 7 frames per second performance hit if it is used but the trade-off is that DLSS performance mode looks almost identical to the old DLSS 3 quality mode and I didn't believe it at first but after seeing it for myself in action it is in fact the truth and I'm extremely excited about the potential this has for Switch 2 since this would mean that games running at 1440p DLSS 4 performance mode, which is actually a 720p rendered resolution, would look close or on par with the old quality mode, which already looked great and near close to native resolution. So I'd say it's worth it to use this on Switch 2, even with the performance hit, since it works on regular resolution rendering with or without ray reconstruction. So if a game runs like at 65 frames per second, it would still run at 60 frames per second with my DLSS 4 on Switch 2, or if it ran even lower than 60 frames per second, there wouldn't be too much work needed to adjust settings to get it to be running at a stable 60 frames per second in a game like Cyberpunk 2077, which by the way, I've seen on an RTX 3050 six gigabyte model, which only has a 96 bit memory bus. And that GPU can run Cyberpunk at 1440p 60 frames per second on an average with low settings and DLSS quality mode without much issue. So the Switch 2's 128 bit bus should be enough but I really wouldn't expect 4K, for example, on Cyberpunk, even at 4K 30 frames per second mode, I think would be pushing it. But I have said before that I do think 1440p upscale for Switch 2 is actually probably the sweet spot for AAA third-party games. So in this test that I ran here on my PC, I'm showing Cyberpunk 2077 running at 1440p upscale from 720p in FSR 3, DLSS 3.8, which is the old model, and the brand new DLSS 4 transformer model set to performance mode. And if you pay close attention to the rotating 3D sign shown in this example, you can see clearly that the new DLSS 4 transformer model is noticeably better than the already very good DLSS 3.8 and far, far better than FSR 3, which by the way is what Xbox Series S is stuck with. And here you can see most of the artifacts are gone with DLSS 4. You'll still have some small amounts of ghosting from this lower resolution, but the shimmering is much improved on things like the sign, and it just looks way cleaner overall on the new DLSS Transformer model, which is a true 
legit visual game changer. This is the kind of breakthroughs that will carry Switch 2 to getting pretty much all the ports since if they can get away with rendering games at 720p upscaling to 1440p with this low level of loss in terms of quality then basically you got your impressive quote unquote secret sauce or tiny console magic with Switch 2 and people who play this are going to be blown away by what it can do. Since there are no portables like Switch 2 on the market that can do DLSS 4, all of them are built on AMD chips which is limited to FSR 3. FSR 3 just looks really bad when rendering at low resolutions trying to upscale since there's just too much image breakup and detail lost to have it look acceptable on a big screen TV. And as we know, those portables like Steam Deck and the Legion Go, they are all not really supposed to be played on a TV, so FSR 3 might might look okay on a small screen, but Switch 2 has to work on big 4K TVs, so you can see now why DLSS 4 and Nintendo's own patented variant of DLSS are going to be so needed for Switch 2 to thrive as a true next generation console. And now, finally we have an interesting update on the Switch 2 SoC node size. We've been discussing back and forth if it would be Samsung 8 nanometer or Samsung 5 nanometer since the leaked motherboard showed the NVIDIA SoC is in fact made by Samsung by its markings on the chip and many have speculated that the chip density combined with the measurements of the surrounding LPDDR5X RAM of the SoC seems to support that this could quote unquote be a 5 nanometer chip. But like we talked about before, we won't know for sure until it's torn down and taken apart. And if it is an eight nanometer chip, it's still something that I personally think would be great while docked. And we also have those supposed leaked clock speeds, which may also support it being eight nanometers if the clocks are actually correct. But oddly enough, there really isn't anyone outright backing up those clock speeds as being legit, and we really don't know for sure where they actually came from. So that's all kind of odd, right? Digital Foundry also isn't even sure if those clock speeds are correct, and they themselves aren't even sure if it's eight nanometers or five nanometers, but they seem to be leaning on the eight nanometer side of things based on how they've been talking. However, there is something that many people may have missed and are not talking about that I've seen recently, and I can see why, since people People tend to watch gaming channels and not tech channels when it comes to covering Switch 2, right? And rightfully so. Like, you wouldn't watch Gamers Nexus or Linus Tech Tips to get updates on Switch 2. But what if the tech industry actually knows more about Switch 2's technological makeup than the gaming industry does? Hmm. Let's take a look at what Linus Tech Tips reported on Switch 2's SoC and then we'll discuss. That's right. While you should always take leaks with at least one grain of salt, we're feeling pretty confident that this list will closely reflect the guts of the Switch 2. Let's start with the GMLX30-R-A1 processor. <laughs> really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? The GMLX30 is an SoC, or system on a chip, that contains the CPU, GPU, memory controller, and the I.O. It's the beating heart of the Switch 2, and from what we know, it appears to be a semi-custom 5 nanometer variant of the originally 8 nanometer NVIDIA Tegra T239 from a couple of years ago. And if that's true, it is going to be a big upgrade. I'm talking 8 tiered ARM cores instead of just three, and a shockingly potent sounding GPU that uses NVIDIA's Ampere architecture, like the GeForce 3000 series, with 1,536 CUDA cores, 12 streaming multiprocessors, and maybe even other features, such as an optical flow accelerator for frame generation, and 8th gen NVENC video encoding. Now granted, I know Linus Tech Tips reputation since 2023 has been under fire for various things like GPU reviews being inaccurate and omissions and errors, but they have actually taken a lot of steps to improve since 2023 and have corrected a lot of their previous production mistakes. And this time with Switch 2, they seem to be talking with a lot of confidence that this will be a 5 nanometer chip for Switch 2 and that is actually a shrunken down T239 chip, which is basically now named something else due to that as we've seen on the leaks. Now, in terms of them actually knowing for sure if this is a five nanometer chip, we can't really say yet, but this is a 16 million subscriber channel with the top contacts in the industry at NVIDIA and Samsung. And if they wanted to verify if Switch 2's SoC was five nanometers, they probably could do it. And a lot of the time, people that do have correct information will wait until someone else rumors it or speculates on something before they chime in and basically agree with it as being legit 
so they don't get in trouble for actually leaking something possibly as sensitive as a chip node size for Samsung. Since if it was an actual leak, by Linus Tech Tips for example, a leak like that could actually have dollar value attached to it. Like a Samsung SoC chip win for Nintendo with Nvidia at 5 nanometers could theoretically be something very valuable to the stock market. So it could be in a larger company's best interest like Linus Tech Tips to not ever leak things like that as legit, but basically report on things that others have covered and then agree agree with it being accurate, which is exactly what they did here. They basically took a tech power up article and said everything they know seems to line up with the Switch 2 SoC being 5 nanometers from the previous 8 nanometer chip from a few years back. Hmm. So yeah, I'd say this is all very discussion worthy. So please let me know what you think about it in the comment section regarding this. Either way, we'll be finding out in a few months and also either way, whether it's eight nanometers or five nanometers, Switch 2's graphical performance is going to be awesome for Nintendo. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this content, and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.